Coming up on the JMBN Tech Show this week, Seven Mesh released some new wet weather gear. Merida have a new heavy hitting park bike. The Intense M1 is back. Woo! And we discuss what is the best beginner mountain bike. All right, so getting there with the new Merida 160FR, which is aimed at heavy hitting bike park riding. So increase the travel on the front and there's a coil shot now. So the FR is actually 171 travel. It's got 180 forks, it's got a DVO Onyx 38. 180mm fork is actually the first 38mm stanchion fork we've seen from DVO. And it's got their Jade X coil rear shock as well. Uh, interesting size on these bikes, they go from your height, you can use their website, and it goes from extra short up to extra long. I come out as a mid, which is what I'd expect actually. Uh, geometry, 63 and a half degree head angle, 78 degree seat angle, pretty standard, I guess, for this sort of bike. It's got a Dior drivetrain and TRP Trail Evo brakes with two 20mm rotors. So big brakes, big suspension, uh, cheaper drivetrain. It's quite interesting the way they're doing it. Yeah, no, I think that's quite fun. I mean, you're going to, even if you look after your drivetrain really, really well, it's still like a wear item, isn't it? Whereas yeah. suspension parts, okay, you can service them, but yeah, it seems sensible to keep the price not stratospheric. And you might think a bike part bike as well might be on lifts more than it. So yeah, true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, prices, 400 model is £2,800 or 3,360 euros, and the 600 model is £3,500 and or £4,200 euros. And now the 7 Mesh uh, Air Map collection. So 7 Mesh, a Squamish based clothing and outerwear company. Uh, you may have seen Innis Grahams wearing their stuff at the on the EWE. DR circuit, I want to say EWS, that's really bad, isn't it? I'm, I'm vintage already on Enduro, sorry. Um, Squamish, as you may know, is uh, West Coast Canada, so it's really wet, it's really muggy conditions, uh, and that's something they've really looked at in tuning this, uh, this new air map collection. And the collection's made up of a really cool anorak, a jacket, I think two pairs of pants as well. Um, and the, the main theme of the the collection is that they're utilizing single layer, two layer, and three layer fabric, so windproof, waterproof, uh, in all the right places. So it's super breathable and you can wear it lots in horrible inclement conditions. Um, it's a nice feature on the jacket as well, you can uh, fold it up and then attach it to your bars if you, oh. uh, if you get too hot. And also they've got a crash repair and replacement program. So four off and a recce jacket, you can get involved and get a new one. Oh, very good. And, and you want your jacket to last forever and not the chemicals that are in it. And they've stopped using any of the PFVs, the sort of bad uh, forever chemicals that some other brands are using. So yeah, seems like an interesting collection. And now the Intense M1 is back. Woo! A legendary bike. Uh, originally launched in 94, the M1 was iconic, ridden by people like Sean Palmer, Chris Kavarik as well. It even says Nigel Page. Yeah. Is Nigel Page, does he fit in of that list? I, I <laughs> think friend so. Of ours. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, of course he is. Uh, back in the day, lots of other brands used these bikes and rebranded them. Many a world champ has won on this bike, even though it didn't look like an Intense. Um, it's actually still a prototype at the moment, apparently, but it looks a lot more finished now. We're seeing painted bikes as well. And we saw it win the US Open under Dakota Norton at the weekend, and actually Joe Breedham is in fourth place on this bike as well. Oh, nice. So super interesting. Um, yeah, it's got a new paint job, which is a nod to the original M1. Can't wait to see a bit more of this on the racing circuit, and hopefully be able to buy this thing sooner rather than later. It was designed with the help of John Hall, who's Aaron Gwynn's mechanic, and it is aluminium. Nice, another metal DH bike. Yeah, nice to that. see. Right, getting into the topic this week, and it's a question we get asked all the time, what is the best mountain bike for beginners? Depends on budgets, of course, so we're going to look into that as well. Maybe you don't want to be spending loads of money, like thousands of pounds on something you don't know. you never yep. tried it before. Indeed, yep. And also, you know, more importantly, don't be wasting it so you can throw some money at a bike that ends up being uh, something that you can't upgrade or it's not yep. as good as you'd hope. So trying to find some good bikes that are going to get you into sport in the right way as well. Yep. It's a couple of different options with the type of bikes you go for, the brands uh, as such. So you could go for these direct-to-market brands, people like uh, YT or Canyon. They sort of cut out the middleman. They don't have bike shops, but sometimes that makes them cheaper. Or you can go more old school route and go to the bike shop where you can get some pre-sale advice, a bit of help, uh, get to know those bike shops. You know, they're very important, especially back there. I remember going to bike shops and meeting all the people there and learning about the bikes. Well, then they're also really good for advice too. So if, you, if you're uh, beginning your mountain bike journey and you're kind of like, what, what direction do I want to go in? Do I want to go for a hardcore hardtail? Even at a budget price or do I want to go for a cross-country bike? Going into that bike shop can 
can help set the, the sort of agenda of where you want to go and what you might want to try in the future. There are some bargains out there at the moment as well. The industry is in this place where there's almost an oversupply, so uh, shops are trying to get rid of bikes, but also that's affecting the second-hand market as well. So if you're a buyer, it's quite good for getting cheap bikes. If you're a seller, maybe not so good at the moment. All right, let's get into a few important things to take into account when you are buying a bike. Yeah, I mean, I think... I'll say the first thing is probably sizing. Make sure, you know, you might get a really, really, really good offer on a bike, uh, but if it doesn't fit you, it's probably not going to be the best bike. Yeah. So, yeah, avoid that. Other thing is, I think lots of people get drawn into, uh, into materials and tech really quickly in terms of, I want to get a carbon, I want to get a light one. And carbon can be great, but if you're on a budget, you might be compromising the rest of the kind of build kit of that bike just to get that carbon frame, which means you, yeah, your ride experience might not be as good as if you'd got an alloy bike with some better components on. It doesn't mean you know, carbon's better for everything anyway. Yeah, alloy's no, great yeah. for some things. Sort of on the same kind of point, uh, full suspension versus hardtail. For sort of sub thousand uh, pounds, a hardtail, you're gonna get better components on there. If you sort of stretch it to full suspension bike, that maybe the bits on there that make up the rest of the bike aren't gonna be quite as good. Uh, and yeah, I think it's that, that thing of if you get a decent frame at the start, um, there's lots of, uh, we often talk about standards, and there's probably tech shows upon tech shows about all the different standards. Um, you know, put in your favourite standard below in the comments, um, <laughs> because there's, there's so many different standard ones. But if you get a decent frame to hang all the components off, you can upgrade in the future. So you might have budget bits to begin with, but you can upgrade them as you wear them out. Exactly, you're gonna love it, and you're gonna wanna upgrade it, so yeah. make sure you can. Exactly. Anyway, let's dig into a few examples of some good bikes, that, uh, some bargains that are, on, that are on the market at the moment. Let's start with Decathlon, uh, who have bikes from £249.99 for a Rock Rider Hardtail with 27.5 wheels, nine speeds, so good for getting into it, but maybe slightly limited once you start riding a bit faster or further on that thing. Yeah. Um, specialised. I mean, they've been around for a long, long time. Yeah. First production mountain bike. Uh, and the Rock Hopper is a classic. It has been around almost as long as Specialised have. Um, they've got a the, the Rock Hopper coming in at 425, uh, so really competitive price. And they've got the option of 275 or 29er. Um, it's got cable pull brakes, which, okay, aren't as nice as hydraulic, but they're, they're still better than a V brake uh, or, a, or a rim brake. And 2x8, which probably gets you a nice range. Okay, you've got a front derailleur, but basic componentry, but it's going to be a good bike from Specialized. Super upgradable, that, if you're going to want different gears yeah. and brakes on that, yeah. Moving on to Canyon, one of those direct uh, consumer brands with their Grand Canyon 5. Uh, this sale price actually on this is £699, usually £849. So again, a good alloy frame. Now you've got one by 11 Shimano Dior gears on there with a the hydraulic Shimano brake. So kind of budget, but really good stuff on there. RockShox 35 forks. Uh, and again, kind of a real solid build. Nothing that's gonna need upgrading straight away on that. No, that's really nice. Um, and last but not least, we've got the Polygon D5 Cisco. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I think so. Okay, yeah. Which is 950 with, a, with an outdoor shop discount cardy thing. Um, so yeah, entry level full suspension, we've, we've already talked about a little bit. This one is right, I guess, on that, that price point of, yeah. uh, of hardtail versus full suspension. But if you really want a full suspension, this one's got 120 mm travel and 275 wheels. So be interesting to, to look at. Or oh, I think a really good option for a beginner is an e-bike. So we're jumping up the price here, because obviously you've got uh, things like motors and batteries uh, yeah, now, course, but yeah. for a beginner, you're gonna get out on the trails, you're probably gonna ride a lot more on this yeah. thing. So this is a bargain, a really good price on this bike, Vitus e the uh, LT, so 297, so mixed wheels on here. And it's 174, 160 rear travel, so big hitting bike, the yeah. Fang M510 uh, motor drive unit on there. And it's actually got a thousand pounds off, so it's 2,299 pounds at the moment. Bit of a bargain, Choose some 3,299. That's a lot of bike for that much money. Obviously, it's a lot more than some of the other beginning bikes, but if you're, if you're wanting to dip your toe in the e-bike world, that's a great, great Yeah, I think start. so. Second-hand market, of course, is out there as well. Um, the usual places like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, I find is really good for finding those sort of lower price options yep. out there. Got to be obviously a bit more careful if you're buying second-hand, so try and check the bike out. 
things like uh, a really scratched up frame if the paintwork's looking a bit scratched. You, know, you can tell a, a lot from how well it's been looked after by looking at the bike, but there's more risk involved by second hand. Yeah, there is. I mean, some shops do second hand bikes as well, so sometimes that takes some of the risk out. So it's probably you know uh, been traded in for a new bike, and so there's probably less less risk about that one. So yeah, just be mindful, I guess, buying second hand. Yeah, I guess if you can check this bike out as well, look for movement in bearings. Things like that could get quite pricey quite quickly actually if you've got to replace bearings on a full suspension bike or yeah. And a bit of work as well. If you don't know how to do it, then you have to take it to a bike shop. Also, be aware, these are the places where, you know, stolen bikes do get sold. So if it looks too good to be true, you know what I'm saying is? Probably is. So yeah. be a bit more wary if you're buying a bike secondhand. So in conclusion, if you're new to mountain biking, a bike shop is a really great place to start. And I know my friend who owns a bike shop, he says there's some banging deals we have at the moment. Obviously, he's trying to sell you bikes. He would say that. <laughs> yes, he would, but he's a very good salesman. I think yeah. that's what we're talking but about. But as we yeah. say in the minute, the market is really in favour of the buyer. Very much so. We've got lots of videos out there of how to buy one, so do check the links below for, for more video help on buying secondhand. Right, into the comments from last week's show, where uh, we're talking about dang Giro bikes, so triple clamps on enduro bikes. There was a mixed response in the comments, we should say. <laughs> Uh, PC Addict uh, says, I had a boxer on my hardtail once. Does that mean I was riding a downtail bike or a hard hill? That doesn't sound like it. It should be a hard hill. No. I think we need more categories, do we? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree. Let's, uh, let's have more. <laughs> but uh, I mean, there was a time when people did put, uh, you know, full, uh, triple clamps on hardtails. Yeah, mean, I yeah, they did, like hardcore hardtails. Yeah, yeah, there was a whole thing. Yeah. In fact, I've done it for a video. Oh, right, there you go. No, it wasn't, didn't make much, as much difference as you want, really. Oh, right, there it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> Uh, Alan Davis has got the um, possibly the comedian Alan Davis, yeah. maybe uh, that'd be good. Hi, Alan, if you're uh, if you're out there, it'd be great to get you riding. Uh, Dan Joro, no, there's lots of stars. I think we can uh, we can guess Buzz, maybe we'll say Buzz. Well, right it's off. four stars. I'll guess it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Right off. <laughs> Not fan of Dan Giro. Whereas Martin Cantwell says, uh, I've got a propane spin drift with Fox 40s up front. So 180 rear, 203 up front. Love it. That sounds all right. No issue climbing, but really forgiving on the downhills. Nice. Uh, Doogie Hauser, possibly the famous uh, teenage doctor. Yeah. Got, probably, I'm getting all the famous people. Probably in good. his 50s by now. Uh, yeah, possibly on a different <laughs> TV show. But uh, he remembers the 2015 uh, Specialised Enduro Evo, um, which had boxes up front. And actually, I think the original Enduro from S-Works, or maybe second gen, that came with Specialised Zone Future Shock. Well, that's what crown. I thought this was. This bike yeah. completely met, uh, passed me, and I Googled it. I said, yeah, it did come with a boxer up front. That's a good-looking bike. That actually. is. That's good, yeah. And Porn 3 Dirt says, whatever happens to those dual crown free ride hardtails, those sure were pretty. I mean, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. They, they didn't <laughs> tick, yeah, no, they weren't for me. But you know what, it's a, we've got a broad church, so if people like different things, that's always good. Right, let's get into bike caves, start with Jeremy. Uh, where's he live? Woodstock, he, Canada. Yeah, he broke his elbow and his rib, which sounds painful. Hopefully it's, it's eased up. So once the pain has gone down, he's decided to clean up his garage. Uh, built a bench, got a cabinet, bought a new bike, but you can't ride it. Hopefully you can now ride it. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. It's a bold move, isn't it? Buying a bike when you can't ride it. I mean, that would be too much for me. It'd be a bit like torture, but uh, the garage is looking mint, so excellent work there. I Jeremy. like the bench, actually. Super clean. It is very clean. Is it going to stay that clean? I'm also spotting a motorbike. It's a Honda old oh. CB, possibly, tucked away there. Kids' bikes, fat bike. Fat bike. Canada, why not? Indeed. Oh, and another, what's that? A KTM Adventure. All the toys. Jealous. Yeah. And a gravel bike. Well, I like the gravel bike, so that's good. Um, next, we've got Peter in his shed. Uh, he's read on the insulation. Wow, his shed's got insulation. Fair play. Um, two pack epoxy paint on the floor. Oh, nice. So, effectively, opposed to just sealing the concrete, he's gone full Ooh, workshop spec. I'm thinking this, I'm moving soon, and I'm just trying to decide whether I want to polish the concrete or go epoxy. The epoxy I like, but I always think I drop stuff, and then you may drop some little on a speckly uh, floor. Yeah. I'm never going to find it. Anyway, I just digressed. I like the bike, six bikes hanging up, and it's like the little sort of pegs for the shoes. Oh, good yeah, idea. No, that's really good. Like a boot peg. Some very nice bikes as well. Ooh. S Works special. Yeah, and S -works. then all storage on the other side. I that's, like it. That's actually possibly neater than the service course here. Zero as well, isn't there? Nine speeds of the road, Catipo. Yeah. Some niche bikes as well as a Specialized in there. A newer Luna 12-speed for commuting. 
and a little canyon spectra as well by the looks of it. Or Very is good. that a new one? I don't know. Very nice. Prism. Don't forget, if you've got an amazing bike cave that we should judge and be envious of, uh, put it in the link below or in the comments even. I want inspiration, actually, yeah, get involved. Uh, anyway, coming up on the channel... Oh, and you're doing some gear indexing for dummies, I hear. But not for dummies, because it's yeah. for people who tune into GMBN <laughs> Tech and GMBN, so you're not dummies, you're good people, so that's good. Plus, we're checking out the World Cup cross-country race bikes to see ah. with what's the cheapest and what's the most expensive bikes out there that the pros are riding. Uh, excellent, that'll be very interesting. Yeah. There's a rock rider out on there as well, so potentially one of the budget bikes. Podium. Podium bike exactly. already. Joshua DeBose bike. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for GMN Tech.